Hey everybody. So today we're making a really cool piece. Um, Kaylina designed this one. It's her third piece and it's like a all-in-one card coin pouch thing, but it's three-dimensional. Um, so I'm gonna tr not even try to explain it. We're just gonna get into it. Uh, the pattern is available. Second link in the description. And this is what it's gonna look like. So two mirrored images. We're gonna cut these out and tape them together to make one piece because we want to make sure that uh, you got the whole piece and it doesn't fit on an eight and a half by 11. And once we have these two pieces cut out, all we're gonna do, there's two lines here. doesn't matter which you go over or under on, but we're just gonna line up these lines here and that'll make sure the whole pattern is straight and square. And then I just have, I like to use packing tape because it's nice and big and just tape this down. And it doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to be functional. And then we'll flip it over and just add a second piece right here so that they're nice and solid. And so if we look at this pattern, it is very unique. Um, so there's, it looks like a frog and there's flaps here that we need to make sure we cut out of our leather piece. But then we have this dotted line here. Now you can make just a coin pouch out of this or you can make a card wallet out of it. If you're gonna make a card wallet with this included piece that goes behind here, you're gonna to wanna to cut out this dotted line That'll give you the curve, and you could do this if you're making a coin purse too, but um, this gives you the curve so you can access your card. So I'm gonna do that once this is taped together. It's just a little bit easier to make sure that your pattern, um, the curve is nice and lined up and you don't have a little step from one piece to the other. I'm gonna use some three, four ounce uh, bridle. And I'm just going to cut a chunk off of this little roll here. And this is how we order our leather from Weaver. Um, they only sell the Herman Oak in 11, 12 ounce, but we have them cut it into 11 inch strips and they split it down for us. They have a splitting service, it's a couple bucks. And so that's how you can get any leather that they sell at a weight that you can use for wallets or whatever you need. So before we cut this out, we're gonna punch some holes. I have a 530 seconds punch from Weaver. And I'm gonna punch holes, not just for where we're putting the snaps, but I'm also gonna punch holes where we're making this slit in the middle of the leather. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna prevent this leather from ripping over time. It's gonna, um, we've gone over this before, but basically instead of having a cut that just ends, we'll have a cut that essentially goes down and then makes a little tiny roundabout and this one comes back. So I'm gonna do those here, but then I'm also gonna do them at this angle. You don't have to do this, but this angle is just steep enough um, or small enough where I like to do it just to prevent any sort of tear out that might occur because we are gonna be folding this over. So over here, I'm just gonna go there, there, and then I'm gonna punch my buttons and then the little turnaround thing as well. And I like to punch these holes first because then when we go to cut this out, we can just line everything up and make all of our cuts either into or from the punches so that we're not cutting into leather we don't want to cut into. Just makes it a bit easier. And you can see here with this angle where, you know, I said you don't necessarily need to, but it's nice to have. Um, so we've cut into that punch there, and now we can just cut out of it. So we'll start with our blade in the punch and cut out. And we don't have any intersecting or overlapping cuts. That'll stay nice and uh, nice and strong as this wallet's used. And so once we have everything cut out, we have to do a little bit of burnishing before we do anything else. And what we're doing is we're burnishing the interior uh, edges that aren't going to be sewn or, or anything else. 
those edges are the top of our card pocket if we're using it, and also the top of this card pocket, and then these two seams, because this is actually going to become the liner for the flap. So we're going to burnish down and around, and down and around. And so once we have all of our burnishing done, you're going to want to install the male end of your snap into the um, where the card slot's going to be, because next step is to install the back card, the back leather piece that makes the card slot. Now, what I've gone ahead and done is I've skived down the edges to remove some thickness, and I've roughed up the leather because this leather doesn't really take glue that well um, if it's not roughed up. Uh, you don't have to skive down, you don't have to rough off leather, you don't even have to add this if you don't want to. But if you do, um, we're going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to apply glue to these edges here, and just these two edges, and we're going to stick that next. And so now we're going to just glue this pocket down, but we're not done with this seam yet. So this creates our card slot, but what we need to do next is create what's essentially going to be an accordion coin pouch. And we need to start by taking our little frog legs here and folding them over and creasing them. Now you could wet mold this, I'm not going to, but you could. And we're going to fold these over to make our life a lot easier later before we do more gluing. Now the way this is going to work is we're going to glue this seam to this seam, like this. And then this leather piece is also going to fold this way. You can kind of see now how we're going to create that accordion pocket. But the cool thing that Kalina did was she cut this halfway down. So this actually goes from a fold and then flips to an outside stitch seam. And what that's going to eventually do is hold this open, creating kind of a Japanese coin pouch style um, compartment. And you can fit a ton of stuff in it. So once we have these folded over, we're going to fold them back. And then we're going to glue on t uh, the back of the card pocket we just glued in. And we're going to glue the diagonal side um, right next to it. So once this glue is set up, all we're going to do is kind of maneuver this into place. And I like to start at the top here to make sure that this is nice and even and lined up. And we're just going to work our way down like that. And this is a little bit difficult, but don't be afraid to kind of just bend and mash this leather wherever you need to. Um, this is a pouch with lots of bends, like almost an origami style thing. So you got to get used to that. And then I'm going to go over here and tap this down with the hammer. So it's really well stuck. We want this to the, do, the glue to do the heavy lifting here to make sure that we can get our shape all put together um, before we do any stitching. Now we just do the other side. And once we have these two seams glued together, you can kind of see our little pouch wallet taking shape. Now the interesting thing about this is that this liner is incorporated into the piece. So like I talked about before, you have leather folding over, but then this slot here that we cut creates the liner. And this is a whole other thing that we'll get into, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just stitch these seams up.
So the last glue joint is the trickiest glue joint. Um, and that's because we're going to end up sticking this together while the flap is folded over to get the right shape. Um, but first we're just gonna do it step by step. You can do it. We're gonna glue first. So what we're gonna do is you have to take into account the overall shape, end shape of the piece. So these top pieces here, this is just a liner. So if you wanna glue down, you can. Um, I'm only gonna glue to the, um, to the hole that we punched for the snap. You'll see why. I don't really suggest gluing much further than that. On the sides though, you wanna do a very short glue joint because this is not liner. This is actually a continuation of this flap that's gonna hold our coins in as we close up the wallet and use it. So I'll take my glue here and I'm gonna glue our little sort of frog legs first. And I'm just gonna do like a stitch lines width on the side. But then I'm gonna glue pretty much all of this. And now there's a trim allowance here. So we're gonna end up cutting off probably about a quarter inch of that. And I'm gonna go down pretty far because of that. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. It's a good thing I never claim to be the uh, the neatest gluer out there because this is a little messy, but it's okay. It'll all be hidden. Now we're gonna go to our flap, and you gotta kind of it's kind of a juggling act because you don't want the glue to touch anything as it sets up. But we're gonna go down here, and remember sides we want just a tiny little bit of glue seam. And the top, we can kind of go a little bit wider because this is not a functioning part of the wallet, it's just the liner. I mean, it's functioning in that it gives it a structure, so. But it doesn't hold any coins or cards or anything. Then on this side, back to the smaller glue joint. And then we're gonna get this nice and set up. Um, you can go around here if you want. And make sure, if you're using a contact cement, which I cement, uh, suggest, um, make sure you let this set up to where it's not, it can be a little tacky to the touch, but you want it mostly dry. That's when this stuff really is at its uh, strongest. All right, so our glue is dry. So we're gonna go about this very slowly because it's a little tricky, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to match up my ends, but only about a quarter inch. Not, I'm only gonna do one side. Then what we wanna do is, we wanna fold this over like we're closing it. And we're going to slowly get it into position. And I'm going to hold this one out of the way. And we're gonna bring this down and glue it. And now, if you're going off, like if it's diagonal like this, it's fine as long as the edges are lined up. And once you do this, what you'll notice is we're gonna have extra here. That's totally okay. The only thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that this is sort of an even amount of extra. There we go. And you can see now when we do that, it glues, well, we have to hammer this down, but it glues the flap in this position. Right? And once we get this hammered and stitched in, when we pull this flat, it's gonna pop these sides open and create that dimension that we're looking for. And that's the real tricky part about this. It's not super tricky, but if you've never done it before, it can be a little, a little nerve wracking. So I'm gonna do this one the same way. Get it started with a little quarter inch here so we know that this is gonna line up. And this side is usually a little easier because you already have a bend in it. And you can sort of match up because this is our center seam, we want this to be even. You can sort of start by matching that up and then bring it over and glue it down here and then glue the rest of it down here. There we go. And now this is still fairly fragile because there's a lot of tension on it. So I'm gonna bring this over to my block with my hammer and bring the block to me at least and tap this glue seam down.
So to give you an idea of how much trim allowance, um, we'll do it in metric. We, yep, we have metric here. Um, we're looking at about four millimeters of trim allowance here. Um, and that'll vary a little bit depending on the thickness and the type of leather you're using. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this off. There we go, we flip it over. You can see now what we got going. But one of our last steps is we just need to stitch this up. So I'm just going to run a stitch line. I'm gonna go on the inside. Around here. And the reason I'm going on the inside is because the only joint we have is right here. And to be honest, filming is a little stressful. So you can make sure you get this nice and close. Nice, uh, the joint is nicely butted up to, each piece is nicely butted up to each other. Um, but we'll be able to pull this with our thread, but I'm gonna stitch I'm gonna punch from the inside so that I can make sure I'm getting a stitch on either side of this and I'm not going straight through the middle. So I'm gonna edge this before I install the snap just because then this will lay flat and I won't have to worry about the snap kind of propping it up. But it's pretty simple. I did a, a quick sand to level everything. And then we're just gonna bevel this. And then we'll do our normal quick sand with like uh, three or 400 grit and then burnish. And here we go. So this came out really nice, but before we go through the final product, I wanted to go through the design process and what it took to get to this point, because it's really interesting and I guess you don't see a lot of this um, in our videos. So Kaylina designed this piece uh, with a little bit of my help. It was collaborative, but she started it. Um, and so she started with, we've done a video on one of these before, one of these sort of just simple Japanese style coin pouches, and this is the pattern for that. What she wanted to do was, she wanted this with a card slot. But the problem is, as she moved on, we ended up with like a, just basically a, a simple sort of accordion style wallet. And you could put coins in here, but it didn't really mimic the three dimensional um, type design that this had where you opened it up and you had a full sort of coin pouch on the inside. And so after that, she moved here. And this is where the liner comes in. Now, once we had this, or once she had this, we real she realized, well, the only thing preventing this from becoming this is that this liner needed to connect. And that was kind of the um, the nucleus. She got it, you know what I mean? She she got the piece that she was looking for. And so this is the pa the final pattern, and this is her final sample. And you can see by connecting these pieces, that's where the dimension came in. So remember, this is the original, and this is where this comes from. You have your card slot here, and you have your dimensional coin purse here. So this is very similar to uh, the final product that we're gonna show you in a minute, but I wanted to point out, she doesn't design on the computer. Kaylina only does hand-drawn stuff, so then she hands it over to me, and I put it into the computer, and 10 hours later on this one, because this was insane to try to get right, um, this is what we ended up with. And here is our final product. And so it's not admittedly the most easy thing to make. It's not a very complicated design when it's put together and you can see it just lays perfect. It, this thing is just awesome. But you do have a few nuances, right? And I'm actually gonna go in and make 
in the final pattern that'll be available in the description, we're going to bring this curve way up. I made a mistake and made this too deep. So this is going to be really mellow, just to come down right below the snap. But in the final design, you open it up and you have this nice deep well for coins or cash or it, cards, anything you want. You have your card slot here. If you don't want to put this card slot in, you can make this just a pouch wallet. And the thing that is really interesting to me is the way that this seam goes from folded over to create that dimension on the inside to flipped to create the built-in liner. And it's all one piece besides, you know, this one part. But the whole body is a single piece and it's just got so much dimension and it's just, just great. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy making this piece. Seriously, try it. It's, it's just really awesome. And these make, once you get them down, they're pretty quick to make and they just have so much functionality um, that I think you'll really enjoy the project. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.